It's a good frosty morning in the shop. It was down in the single digits last night, and it's up to a whopping 18 degrees in here now. That's Fahrenheit for those of you that use Celsius. So I thought we would work on a fairly straightforward project that uses big heavy material that'll stay hot a little bit longer in the cold shop. And I thought we would make a bending fork for the anvil. Now the exact size of the fork really doesn't matter. The key element is you need something that's going to fit in your hardy hole. This is a little bit too big, so I'm gonna to have to draw it out a little bit. If your material's a little bit too small, you're gonna to have to upset it a little bit, so it's just up to whatever size your hardy hole is and whatever material you happen to have on hand. In this case, this is a medium carbon steel of some sort. It's salvaged, I don't know exactly what it is. I'm not going to harden and temper it anyway, so it's going to be good and tough, just air-cooled. So the exact type of steel really is irrelevant. It's just going to be a little bit better than mild steel. Although mild steel would be fine for a project like this if you've got it in the right size. I'm going to start by tapering the end a little bit so that it will actually fit in the hardy hole. Looks like I cut this about five inches. It was just a random cut, didn't bother to measure it. Just has to fit. It's getting there. Now this is a little harder to forge because it is medium carbon. And yes, I'd normally just take this to the power hammer and I'd be done with it by now. One of these days I need to make a pair of tongs just for doing hardy tools. Something that fits a little bit better. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup with a lighter hammer to make sure I've got nice smooth edges here. I'm going to just lightly knock down the edges because the hardy hole has a kind of a round edge on it. And let's drop it in there. Use the Daniel Moss hammer that he made for me. And make sure it fits. And I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and do that again. Just working it to loosen it up so I can get it back out of there. Now if you've got a real lightweight anvil, you might want to find another way to do this so that you're not abusing your tail of your anvil there as light as I'm going with this. I'm not too worried about it on this anvil. That little 50 pound anvil, it would be possible to split that off of there. Okay, now is that down in there far enough? No, I think we can go a little bit further. That gives me a good idea of where I'm at, but I think I'd like to come back up another inch. Better to sneak up on it a little bit than it is to get it too thin and have it fall all the way through the hardy hole. Then you got to go back and upset it again. And for bending fork, I'm not looking for a sharp shoulder in the hardy hole, so that doesn't really matter. Since it's not a tool you drive in work,
I think that'll be better. And we go back to this. My hardy hole is not perfectly straight. And some people like to complain when they watch the videos that my hardy tools aren't real solid. But that's the reason they aren't real solid. I can make them fit good and tight in one direction only. If I want them to fit in all four directions, they have to be a little bit loose. Less than ideal, but it bothers you folks watching the videos way more than it bothers me. Okay, that's enough hardy shank on that, I think. Now I want to thin the part that will be the fork, so I'll leave about a half inch at the shoulder there. Thin the rest of this out in one direction only for now. And to do that, I want to use blows where the edge of the hammer lines up with the edge of the anvil as well as I can. This will take a few heats doing it by hand. You could certainly fuller in before you do this, would make it a little bit faster. And I'm only working two sides, and I'm going back and forth to try and keep an eye on how that shoulder is coming out. If you get tired, take a break. Also, if you have a smaller anvil with a one inch hardy hole, this is a lot easier. In the end, what I want is twice as wide as it is thick, whatever that turns out to be. a little off so I'm going to start rounding that up or knocking the corner in. You want it rectangular not diamond shaped. I think that's pretty close to what I want. There's going to be a lot of drawing out after this is done. But to start with, now we want to split that into a fork. I'm going to start this by putting it back in the hardy hole and trying to cut right across the middle. And you could cut from the sides as well, and that would help start to round out the tines a little bit. But it will be much harder to hold on to. But I think we can do it. Putting a tong clip on your tongs can really help with something like this. If you can get the tong clip on there. I 
That way I can balance this against my thigh. A little bit of a shoulder we've created helps keep it in place. And I don't want to go more than about a third of the way from each side here. I do want a kind of an octagon shape in the inside, so this will kind of cut a bevel. And then if I cut straight down, that should cut the flat part, if that makes a sense. Back to cutting straight down. Spread this. Looks like it'll need to be hotter though. Driving this over with a fuller is a good way to go here. I can get the hammer in. Be careful with this though. It's real easy to create a cold shut back in here. So keep an eye on that. If that starts happening, you may need to do some filing or grinding. Take it out to check just for that. Yeah, you can see that sort of happening. So I'm going to go hit this on the grinder real quick and clean that up. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Next thing we're going to do is draw these out and actually make the tines of the fork. We're going to make them a little smaller in cross section, plus draw them out some, and that should uh, make a nice bending fork then. This can be a little bit awkward, but just take your time to make sure you got a good grip on it before you go back to swinging each time. Take them out to a square, the size that you want them in the long run. Remember, square octagon round. Starts to go on a diamond, forge that back in. I like to work both tines alternately to try and keep them even. In the long run, what size these are really just depends on what you're bending and if you're trying to follow the radius of the fork, or if it's just to get the leverage for the bending. This one will be a fairly heavy fork just because. So 
for my purposes. I think we're about where I want to be here. Just trying to clean up that underside so it's a little bit smoother. Start going to octagon. tying to that same point before we round it up. I do want the angle between the two tines about the same before I bend it up so it comes out even at the bend. But we need to finish rounding it up first. And we can round this up. They probably don't have to be perfectly round in use. You're not relying on this as a form. It's more for leverage. But close to round is nice and it makes a better looking tool. One you'll be happier with in the long run. Now's a good chance to file, grind, hot rasp, whatever you need to do to take any rough spots out. And the ends, of course, are really ragged. They'll need to be trimmed off. And you can do that now or after either one. Hot rasping is a good, fast way to do it. And non-electric if you don't have electricity in your shop. Just keep going. It may take several heats to get just what you want. This is just an old worn out farrier's file. I've been using the same one for about 15, 20 years probably. Now let's go ahead and start bending these straight. The distance apart is just up to what you're going to do with it. It 
think I'm going for about an inch apart here. And these will kind of close up and point in towards each other before I get there, so I'll have to fix that. And I think that gives me the space down here I want. If you need to, find some sort of a spacer to put in here so you can get it exactly parallel and just what you're after. I just want to make sure that my shoulder is good here. And that it still fits down in the hardy hole. And the last minute cleanup can be done cold with a file or maybe an angle grinder. But in general, that is our bending fork. That's just one way to make a bending fork. Truthfully, it's much simpler to just fabricate one with two round bars, a flat plate, and something that fits in the hardy hole. But there's a great deal of satisfaction that comes with making things the way it would have been made by our predecessors in the world of blacksmithing before the advent of the arc welder. Plus, it just brings more pleasure in use, at least it does to me, to use traditionally made tools instead of just fabricated tools. Nothing wrong with fabricated tools if that's what you like or if that's all you have time to make. But taking the time to make tools in a more traditional manner can really be a good way to learn more about blacksmithing. It helps your evolution as a blacksmith, helps the learning process, and I strongly encourage you to give it a try if you feel like it. Now once that's cooled, I'll probably do a little bit more filing and grinding on it, but it's probably going to take an hour to cool at this rate. It's still a big, heavy hunk of material. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you'd like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links down in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.